So I've been reading comics for about 20 years now, and lately I've found that I just don't enjoy reading comics like I used to. And I've been reading manga for about 5 years now. I have a strong feeling that the comic book industry is going to be either vastly different or completely gone in 10 years, but manga will still be thriving. I want to make a few videos on why I feel that the comic industry is dying and why it's just not nearly as good as manga. So this is going to be the first video and the first point on why I feel manga is superior to comics. Originally I just wanted to make this a very quick point and move on, but as I did more and more research, I started to get more and more frustrated and I started to feel like this deserves an entire video to itself. Again, none of the following reasons in these videos that I'm making are going to be why I don't read comics anymore, but when you add them all up, that's when it kind of shows why I can no longer enjoy comics. So in order to explain this first point, I'm going to need to tell you who Zoe Quinn is. Zoe Quinn is a writer for DC Comics. She is also a terrible human being. Now I'm going to give her side, cite some articles, and then I'm going to give my opinion on everything that happened. For those of you who don't know, Zoe Quinn is uh, a game developer that was the catalyst for Gamergate. So in 2014, Zoe Quinn made a game called Depression Quest. Zoe Quinn was receiving a lot of hate and a lot of backlash, which I do not support at all. Shortly after she was receiving the hate, her ex-boyfriend at the time made a blog post stating that Zoe Quinn had cheated on him with five other guys, and those five other guys were game journalists that she was sleeping with in order to get a better review for her game. Disclaimer, there is no evidence for what he said. He did not bring forth any evidence. Since then, there has been no evidence. So, take what he's saying with a grain of salt. It's not been proven. Now, I did a lot of research on this, and it's kind of concerning that when I looked it up, the only sources that I were able, was able to find were from Zoe Quinn, where she was being interviewed and giving her side. So, from the research that I did, I mainly want to know what Zoe Quinn had to say about the allegations against her. Everything kind of devolved into she was receiving a lot of hate and a lot of backlash and people were harassing her, which is never okay. It doesn't matter what she did. If you have a problem with her, just don't have anything to do with her. But what I mainly want to know is what she had to say herself about the allegations, whether she said this is completely untrue or, you know, he was just an angry ex-boyfriend. And I couldn't really find that. I found a couple of her replies to what happened, but she doesn't ever say he was lying or I didn't sleep with those guys or anything like that. So, at the very least, it seems like she did sleep with five other guys while she was in a committed relationship. So at the very least, she is a shitty person. I did find this. Quinn was the original subject of Gamergate after her ex-boyfriend wrote a scathing blog post accusing her of sleeping with journalists in order to get good reviews for her game. Those claims have been denied constantly, but the threats against her and other women in the industry haven't stopped yet. So, just on that, I haven't seen where she denied it, but I will say... Even if it's true, she should not be getting death threats and stuff like that. That's never okay. If you have a problem with her, just leave her alone. Where I found her denying those claims, this is what was said about it. And it wasn't even her denying it. This was a, an article written about it where the claims were being denied. And this is what they had to say about it. So one of the five people that she was alleged to have slept with was Kotaku writer Nathan Grayson. Grayson never reviewed Depression Quest. He once wrote half a sentence about the game before his relationship with Quinn ever started. But that's it. So my question is, what about the other four guys she's alleged to have slept with? Also, that doesn't really confirm that what he's saying is untrue. She did have a relationship with this guy. You don't know when their relationship started. Maybe that's when their actual relationship started, but that doesn't mean that they didn't sleep together before his review. I don't care if it's half a sentence or, or a 10 minute video. He still reviewed the game, positively, and he did have a relationship with Zoe Quinn. And it also doesn't mention the other four guys. And it also doesn't mention, even if she didn't sleep with them, to get a better review, she still cheated on her boyfriend with five dudes. Kinda fucked up. Just because someone's getting a lot of hate for something, and she was being treated terribly, I will not deny that. That doesn't make it okay for what she did. She still needs to take responsibility for her own actions. So. There's another interview where she's directly asked about her ex-boyfriend releasing the blog post. And this is what she had to say. 
It was very precise and deliberate. I fully believe it was there to ruin my life. As soon as it hit 4chan, they went into get this mode. They started doxing me immediately, asking who had hacking skills. That's terrible. We kind of skipped the whole topic of him releasing the blog post. Is any of that true? Where did that come from? She doesn't deny it. It would seem like she has a pattern of cheating on boyfriends, and I'll get into that later, but this isn't the first time someone claims that she's done something like this. Now pay attention to this next quote by her, because it'll come back later. And I fully agree with her. Here. People can just make shit up and you can't debunk it. They'll just replay it. This is used to terrorize my family and go after my boyfriend to ruin his life too for the crime of being associated with me. Now tell me it's about ethics and games journalism. 100% agree with Zoe Quinn there. It's really fucked up that someone would make a blog post on you to try and ruin your life. Isn't it? Zoe Quinn said it herself. So anyway, she released a bunch of information on one of her exes that led to him committing suicide. In August of 2019, Zoe Quinn released a Twitter post exposing her ex-boyfriend of almost 10 years ago, alleging that he was abusive and manipulative. Shortly after this, his friends and co-workers wanted nothing to do with him. They fired him and cut off all contact with him. He then began receiving harassment and hate online, and shortly after this, took his own life. Zoe Quinn's response was to delete her Twitter account and delete the post in question. Well, as Zoe Quinn said, people can just make shit up and you can't debunk it. As she also said, people who care about ethics and journalism are part of my ex's revenge on me. Zoe knows how terrible an allegation like this can be. Instead of going to the authorities, instead of trying to handle this like an adult, she decided to make a Twitter post, throwing him under the bus. I'd like to read a few quotes from an article because they say it better than I ever could. It is somewhat unfortunate that Quinn was apparently too scared in this particular case to even mention it for the best part of a decade since it allegedly occurred. If, however, Quinn thinks this was insufficient to go to the cops about, what purpose does her airing on Twitter of these vague grievances serve? Zoe also said, Alec is likely not well and I always believe in rehabilitation over punishment. Does disgracing a troubled person in front of millions constitute rehabilitation over punishment? Was Twitter 10 years after the fact the most productive way? Do not spread life-destroying stories of past relationships to strangers just because social media exists. Any glorified gossip that you disseminate will go far beyond your shared circle, and that will be your fault, unless you are actually looking to destroy lives. There are also some private tweets from Alec Holica where he discusses dating Zoe Quinn and his thoughts on her after they had been broken up. He describes that Zoe Quinn was also abusive in the relationship and displayed wanting to cheat on him several times. So now for my thoughts on the whole situation. 2014, do I believe what her ex-boyfriend said? I believe she cheated on him. I don't know if she cheated on him for to get better reviews in her game, but at the very least, I think she's a shitty girlfriend and she doesn't know how to be in a relationship. As for the backlash she received, I don't agree with any of it. You shouldn't go out and harass somebody. If you don't like somebody, leave them alone. Because, as you'll see later, all it did was help her. But I think Alec Holoka can say it better than any of us. It's clearly not because she's a woman, it's because she's a shitty person. As for the 2019 incident, where she, in my opinion, was at least largely responsible for Alec's death, I think that they were probably both not very good in that relationship. I think he probably did some things that were fucked up, and I think she did as well. And from her past relationships, it's clear that she probably was part of the problem. I think that she should have kept everything to herself, or if she felt that strongly about it, she should have mentioned it at least once in the past however many years, and she should have gone to the police about it. But going to Twitter, because she knows that now nothing can be done about it, and now no legal repercussions can be taken out, because you're worried about how something may or may not have happened, several years ago is not enough to convict somebody. It's enough to get all of Twitter angry with you. It's enough to make a man take his own life. I think she is responsible for that man's death, at least partly. So with all that, I think we've established that Zoe Quinn is a terrible person. So why am I bringing her up? Because she's a writer for DC Comics. You may be asking, why does she write for DC Comics? What other comic writing experience does she have to write for one of the biggest comic brands in America? Absolutely nothing. She was a game developer, and then she wrote a book about her own experience, and now she's writing comics for the second biggest comic distributor in the world. Now you may be thinking DC is unaware of what type of person she is. Well, her most recent comic, Deathbringer, is kind of an ironic title, 
came out in December of 2019, three months after Alec Holoka killed himself. They would have known about that. If someone was in the news for being responsible, or at least partly responsible for someone else's death, DC Comics would have known about it. Now why am I bringing this up? If this is the type of person they want writing for them, imagine how shitty the rest of their writers are. If their only qualifications are you have to be famous, we don't care how evil you are, or how little experience you have, then I'm going to go out on a limb and say they'll just hire whoever they feel like. You may be thinking, well maybe she's a great writer and they just put all that aside because she is such a terrific writer. Ah, uh, she's not. I haven't read her work, but I've read the reviews of her work and all of them say, wow, the artwork is really good, but the story is kind of, eh. That's the best review I could find on her work, is, yeah, the art's good, everything else is a bit shit. You know, everything that she had to do with, not too good. Now, how does this relate to manga? Well, they do this really strange thing in Japan where they hire people to write manga that actually are good writers and actually want to write manga. Not people that are just controversial, that have never written a comic book in their life. They hire actual writers. In Japan, it's highly competitive and it doesn't matter if you're male, female, what color you are, if you're a good writer, they'll publish your work. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there's a bunch of documentaries on manga writers and how they hire them and their basic lifestyle, and it's highly competitive. If you look at some of the manga writers, you'll find people that went into competitions when they were very young and competed against hundreds of other writers in order to become the best writer. You'll find Weekly Shonen Jump, where they only publish the absolute top rated manga, and you'll find people who really care about their craft and devote hours upon hours every week. So much so that it's almost unhealthy the amount of attention to detail they put into their writing. Compare that with DC Comics where they hire people who are famous with sleeping with a bunch of other people that are controversial figures that have gotten a bunch of backlash that are at least partly responsible for killing their ex-boyfriend by making a bunch of claims about him 10 years after the fact when she didn't feel the need to bring it up any time before that. Who do you think is going to have better writers? Now just as a caveat to all this, I'm mostly talking about DC Comics and Marvel Comics. Those are the two biggest comics in America. That's basically what I'm talking about. The independent comics are a little better, but for the most part, DC Comics hires shit writers. They hire controversial figures instead of actual writers. They hire people with no experience instead of people that have been working to become the best writer they can for their entire life. So yeah, in closing, manga has a much higher standard for their writers than DC or Marvel. Mostly DC. And just in case you're wondering, I don't agree with any of the hate that Zoe Quinn received. I don't think she should have received anything at all. I think people should have just not engaged with her at all. I think to an extent she enjoys the interactions, whether they're negative or not. And I think she feels like she's a victim. And getting hate like that makes her feel like even more of a victim, which makes her, that's what she wants. And at the very least, it's helping her because it's gotten her roles with DC Comics. So for all the kids out there, if you're ever looking to get into writing for DC Comics, all you have to do is just be a total piece of shit and be famous for being a piece of shit. And they'll hire you. And obviously, I'm not saying that all writers for DC Comics or Marvel are bad. There are some very good writers, but I think for the most part, they hire people without much experience and they hire people that aren't really necessarily comic writers to begin with. They mostly do other mediums, or if it doesn't work out in comic books, they'll just do something else. Whereas manga, if you read some of the biographies about these manga writers, it's their whole life. It's all they do. And normally you have to intern with another manga writer for years before you can even make your own, just to see how everything works, unless you're crazy talented. I'm gonna make a few more videos on this. Like I said, this isn't a big reason why I stopped reading comics, but just kind of interesting to note the type of people DC is hiring versus the type of people manga writers are hiring. But yeah, the next video won't be as much about one person and more about comics and manga as a whole. So, hope you stick around for that.